you learn and discover so many things and people want to associate their, like themselves with people who know mm. so you become someone different actually yeah. not like uh, because in the coffee business what you're taught is not the end of the end of it all you have to keep on reading and discovering other things so the more things that you discover the more drinks you bring on the table and the more drinks beverage and the more beverages that you bring on the table the more money into your pocket mm-hmm. means that someone who started with nothing your drink is taken by people like people when they come mm-hmm. ah you bring me an andrew china yeah it's very nice it was mixed in a very nice way you know yeah that is money into your what into your pocket so you keep on changing mm-hmm. you understand you keep on changing changing and elevating so those are things that <laughs> It's another beautiful day, another beautiful afternoon, or another beautiful night, depending on where you're watching us uh, around the world. This is House of Talent Television, and this is the coffee break that happens for you and by us. You can catch us on our social media handles at House of Talent Television Uganda. That's on our Twitter handle, on our Facebook, on YouTube. Or you could always go to our website, House of Talent, uh, UG.com, and you can catch all other shows, not only the coffee break. Welcome again to the coffee break. Like I said, my name is Emmanuel, and the coffee messiah, Amon Mukisa, is not here with us today. I think he's out somewhere trying to convert other people to the coffee gospel, but we will have him in next time. But in the studio with me today, I have a man who has spent the last year getting involved with the coffee business. He's a new barrister, but he's also an engineer. We want to get more into his life and understand how he balances the two. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Andrew Walakira. Andrew, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's uh, good to have you here. Thank you for honoring our invitation. I know these days life is busy. People are out there trying
coffee blows your mind better because coffee I, I never knew that I, I used to ask myself like why do whites take coffee mm. you know they take coffee because it has caffeine in it yeah. and what what caffeine does you know when I learned about coffee like the experience was amazing because coffee has caffeine in it mm. and the caffeine it has in it when you take a lot of coffee there's this chemical that our body releases when you when you feel like you're lazy mm. then the brain is like okay it needs to to sleep yeah. so you don't just sleep automatically and you follow mm -mm. the brain releases a chemical called adenosine mm. so it's the chemical that almost bleaches out all the adrenaline in your body and so adrenaline when adrenaline increases adenosine has to go off yeah. and you're always alert so I learned all that through the experience of coffee, through their school. They yeah. teach you why you should actually learn coffee more. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, coffee does this, mm. okay? This is how they process it. You know, when they're processing coffee, let's go on a bit of a, this processing bit of it. Yeah, when, when they're processing coffee, uh, we know this local thing mm. from the garden, they will take away Tundu Valley, uh, they yeah. pour, they dry it, cha, yeah. wait after machine oh. but there are some other good ways this coffee that you enjoy they don't use that method mm. actually me i used to think it's the same method yeah. no they have the semi washed they get that coffee from their sherries red sherries from the coffee plant they bring it they put in a, a drum they sink them mm. so it's a process called flotation mm. after they sink them there are those sherries that float on top now that means that those ones useless are useless they, they take them off then they bring up those ones mm. they put them into the pumping machine they move that uh the, the coating yeah, that the shape, yeah? Yeah. they remove it when they remove it they ferment it for some days then after they bring it they bring it out they dry it yeah. after they dry it they all after alling they roast it they first grade it yeah. because in in grading there are those are uh, coffee beans that are small yeah. There are those that are big. So in that grading, they have their screens that they use mm. to take out the small ones, the big ones. This one is good for export. This one is for our local people. You know, always the local people take what's not, you know. Yeah. So they so they they sieve it after they sieve it, then they roast it. So after roasting, then they bring to the people. They package it like this mm. in such coatings. Then after. It's the coffee that you see and uh, you put in a grinder, you make your coffee powder, then you pull expressos. Yeah. So I was told all that story and I was like, really? This was in Uganda, <laughs> here, in my motherland? I didn't yeah. know about it. Oh. And I was moving to different places and this thing, it was real. And actually, not like you, people don't know about it. That is true. It's only when you meet a friend and introduces you to coffee yeah. and you get to know that it's done in Uganda. Yeah. And it's something that you can do as your second job. That's true. If you have a job and it's, you're working eight hours, and you have a cafe that can take you from from two yeah. to the evening, that's another money coming in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's how I love the experience of coffee, mm. and I fall in love with it. You you know you make a cup and you put a smile on uh, somebody's that's face, nice. and and like yeah, thank you for the nice cappuccino, thank yeah. you for the good light. Yeah. And I'm like wow. This is coffee, yeah. and it's in Uganda. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a white day, it, it's me doing it. So yeah, that's, that's interesting. So now we've got you to a point whereby you know you've got the curiosity. Now you've learned all these things about coffee, things that you didn't even know existed in yeah. Uganda. You know, I I know that most people think only you can only get coffee in these big hotels or in these you know big expensive restaurants. Yet you can actually make coffee at home. You know, yeah, there you are can. many devices like the French press and all that you can actually use to you know make coffee at yeah. home. Uh, we'll get back more into this. Uh, we'll get into the part where by you know after learning all these things, what did you do? Okay, what did you become? What did you get a job at a certain place and all these things? But we shall come back to that after the break and after the break we'll also be brewing some coffee i know for some of you always wait for this part i know there are certain people in the studio here who are anxiously also waiting <laughs> for the coffee brewing we shall get back to that after this short break get a cup of coffee this is house of talent television the coffee break show with me emmanuel
people at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They have moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Yeah, remember Prince? Yes. Prince. Yeah. Prince. Yeah. Welcome back to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. My name is Emmanuel and with me in the studio is Andrew who has been uh, telling us about his story where he started as a, an electrical engineer and ended up in the coffee business, you know, finding out things that he didn't even know existed in uh, Uganda or motherland, yet we are one of the highest exporters of coffee, I think, in Africa. Yeah, true. yeah but there are certain things that we don't know about it. But uh, thank you for uh, sharing with us your experience. I think that the people out there also, who also just know Kawa coffee <laughs> are getting to know that there's actually coffee more. For our hands, yeah. yeah, getting to know that there's actually more uh, that the coffee industry has to offer. Um, before we broke off, you were basically telling us how you learned a lot of things. So, what happened after? You know, with your one uh, one year experience as being a barista, did yeah. you end up getting a permanent job somewhere? Are you freelancing? Uh, what are you doing right now with you know the knowledge that you got from yeah, the so school? basically um, I'm freelancing. Yeah, yeah. The the very my very tutor Isaac, mm -hmm. uh, he keeps on getting gigs. So we do outdoor coffee gigs. Yeah, yeah, for different occasions, just in case someone is there, he, he wants to buy the coffee can get you a woman. <laughs> yeah, true. You know, the, the that's, Latin, a very, that's a very important point, by the yeah, way. Yeah, And some people nowadays they're using it as a trick. You yeah, know, you think know, apply, huh? And people like <laughs> don't know about this coffee thing. Yeah? yeah. So if you bring your woman, it's there. I've had them and you into your pizza, pizza, you, oh. know, you know. So now you bring someone to make him a coffee with yeah. a heart on yeah, it. Top, designed really and well. They're like, bang. <laughs> would you marry me? Definitely, yes, to you. Be honest, I've never seen it happen. He's seeing it on TV now, it's reality. Actually, that gives me a good idea for mm, a proposal. You, you know? know? That's, <laughs> that's a very good and, idea. And so we've been doing these gigs. So I do freelancing. Yeah. If someone needs help, I come in and work for hours. Okay. You pay me my hours after that. I, I move. Yeah. So I building my two businesses. Okay. I do my engineering work, but I'm doing the coffee work. Oh. But mostly during weekends is when we are too busy. Okay. When people are proposing, people are having these meetings, when people are having this. Yeah. And there are those people who also want to make their wives happy. Yeah. So it brings you and you make coffee, yeah. you give your wife a cake. <laughs> You make him a, you make a heart you give. Uh, so definitely that's how I do my work. Okay. I freelance okay. just in case someone needs someone to freelance. That's I come, I do. Uh, after I leave. That's interesting. So before we get into uh, brewing our cup of coffee, uh, do you see yourself getting into the you know coffee business like on a permanent basis? Like, do you plan on opening a cafe somewhere down the road, or you know you just plan on continuing to freelance here and there? You know, trying to get different experiences. Mm, I plan on starting out a cafe. Yeah. Actually, I have it in mind to have a cafe of my own because I, I also want to transfer the very the the, the knowledge I have. Yeah. I want to transfer it to someone else. Ah. Yeah. So through my cafe, also I'll be having people coming around. Okay. So I'll be preaching this coffee, like this entire business. Ah. And the only thing I've seen, like coffee cafes, are in um, these you know spe like specific places. We are by Omutua Wansi. Wabanga atambu atambu lagu ata iso lugu rechi geta sa ku ita you know <laughs> that's why they always know you they just are, look and pass uh -huh, by yeah. like ah, yeah so if you have yeah. a cafe in a remote area yeah so you you know you open their minds yeah yeah because trust me if you go down there I'm to know Mbuzadi then I got under car I'm to know okay you just go and you like 
buy your car and he will go to the shop and get you that. So yeah. when I, I, I have in mind to start a cafe in a very remote area, yeah. so I teach people this new idea because the more energy, like the more energy that you transfer to people, yeah. the more upbringing that you, like the more positive energy that you expose in the things that you, that you, the more positivity that you're spreading. Yeah. Yeah. The more knowledge and creativity also comes up yeah. because for some, like for widespread cappuccino, you know, mm -hmm. no cappuccino, latte, mocha, yeah. macchiato, americano. Now, if you're exposed to an African, you know, Africans are very creative. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For what came up with a cappuccino, never know. If someone loves coffee too much, you come up with his own. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, it kind of sounds like Africano, like how you have the uh -huh, Africano. Yeah. Africano <laughs> and Chino. You know? yeah. And some people will start creating coffee beverages from their own people. Yeah. If someone loves his wife so much, mm. and it's called Anet, Anet Chino. You know? <laughs> that's, that, that, that's interesting. Yeah, so. I, I plan on doing that. Yeah. Freelancing will end one time, I know. Mm. I also have it in mind to be somewhere. Yeah, yeah and have a cafe, transfer the knowledge, teach if possible, yeah. and also introduce people to various new things. Yeah. You know, the more knowledge you transfer, the more positivity. Yeah, that's true. I like the idea of, you know, taking coffee out there to a mutu wa wansi. You know, yeah. Down there. Because I know so many times that, you know, when you look at a coffee shop and you look at the price of the coffee, you're like, ah, this one. <laughs> it's taking my money for the week. But I think with the idea you have, it will really be interesting to basically take coffee out there and get people's minds away from this cow of chikumi where you buy yeah. from, you know, to the add shop. more value. Yeah, to add more value. Um, that's interesting. Well, we're getting into the best part of the show, I believe. Yeah. After, you know, coming all that way, it's time for us to brew our cup of coffee. You know? So just run us through, you know, the machine that we have here. I know there, there are people at their homes with these machines. Yeah. They have never switched them on. They do not know what they do. Yeah. Okay. So just run us through this and just let us know what we're going to be brewing today. Yeah. So now, now this is a, a it's called a desktop coffee machine. Yeah. Yeah. It's a home machine, by the way. Mm. It's not that expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Just because we don't do research. Yeah. But this is something very. It's it's a budget machine. Oh. Why it's called it a budget machine, meaning that someone no to wants us to can afford it. <laughs> you can afford it. So the the uh, here. Yeah. yeah, it's it has various parts here on top here. This is where I put our water. Yeah, yeah So when you put your water you close there is something like a meter here that you have to follow mm. it It can um, if you put water in here. Yeah, there's a it's like a meter It shows you like it can hold up to 12 cups mm. So if you have a gig at home, you can mm. brew your coffee at home. Okay. So we have now. This is our decanter here so now this is our decanter. Yeah. So this decanter, this is where if we are to brew coffee, you, you open here. So inside here, it's where we put our coffee. Oh, it comes with its own filter. Yeah, its own filter. So before you do anything, you first you, you first fill up water here. Yeah. You follow this here. Okay. Yeah, you don't go beyond the max. Oh. So after you cover, then after you open this. Okay. When you open it, now today we are going to brew our coffee. This is um, an SL14 variety. Mm. This is from our very country here. Yeah. yeah, it's from Mbali. Mm. Yeah, you know Mbali is a very nice place because it is mountainous, yeah. and uh, this is an Arabica coffee. Okay, it's Arabica. Arabica means it has less caffeine. And it's kind of very sweet. Yeah? This sweetness, but it's sweet in terms of coffee language, it's yeah. sweet okay. because we have robusta coffee and Arabica coffee. Mm. Now this one is uh, Arabica coffee. Okay. And why it's love it so much? It has less caffeine. Yeah. Its percentage is not that high, yeah. and uh, it's not very rough on the tongue. Yeah. It's a bit smooth. It's smooth, yeah. Yeah, it has nice flavors. Yeah. And flavor it means that it's chocolatey, white, yeah. all that. So today we are going to brew this. We are going to brew this coffee of ours. So it has that aroma in it there. You see, yeah, that's a very good aroma. So this is what we are going to brew today. It's from Mumbale. Yeah. By the way, people, if you're out there. Go to the supermarkets and get yourself this coffee. It's there, and also from the book, book plus we always have it. So this, you have to have your spoon like this. It's not very actually. It's very simple to use. Now this. So there's always a measuring that uh, yeah. you need to put into consideration. Consideration. How many cups of water? You know, um, to the ratio of how many spoons of coffee yeah. are we putting in? Yeah. So now this, uh, this thing has uh, almost like um, twelve cups. Yeah. So and this this spoon of mine is more of like a, 
cup, mm. cup spoon, or how should yeah. I put it? put it? It has a limit of 10, 10 grams. Mm. So not to make it very, very strong, for 12 cups, you can use like four spoons okay. of these. Yeah? Yeah. Full, they should be full. All right. So let's take our first one. For those watching us from home, in case you have this machine and you've never turned it on, this would really be a good time for you to turn it on and just you know go through the process with us. Or if you haven't bought one of these, you can always go out. Remember, this is a budget machine. Uh, you can get it and put it in your sitting room whenever you have a birthday party. You have some visitors coming uh, to your place. You can always you know just put this there, install it in your kitchen, install it outdoors, and it will give you a very good brew of coffee now uh, continue with us as we continue the process uh, to get this cup of coffee yeah uh, with andrew yes. so we're putting our water we're putting yeah. our coffee our coffee uh, so where do we go next from here so after you push it back then when you're done you put your decanter yeah. like that then you put your decanter mm -hmm. so when you switch on the machine yeah. this water here it is forced to go through this coffee here. Yeah. So when it is forced to go through this coffee, then this one receives the outcome. Okay. So you switch it on. So with time, yeah. we shall have our coffee ready. Okay. So as we wait for our coffee to brew, um, you've had a very good experience uh, being a barista for one year. Okay. okay. So I know that there are people outside there also who are considering maybe a career change. Maybe there are students out there, you know, during this lockdown, most schools were actually closed. So most of the people are sitting at home doing nothing, wondering, okay, what can I do with my time, you know? So I just want you to tell the people out there why they should get involved with coffee. And, you know, what are the different benefits that they can get uh, when they get involved in the coffee business? Thank you. Now, in the coffee business, there is one thing I discovered yeah. in particular. The first one. The people that you associate with mm. change. Yeah. You know this kind of thing, it's made for the, you know? The higher class. The higher class. Yeah. And, you know, the corporate people. Yeah. So the more you do something good for them, yeah. it, starts, it starts with coffee. Mm. The more coffee that you do, and it is nice. Yeah. They start being your friends. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, you know, you're there, they will take your number. Yeah. They're like, hi, Barista Andrew, let me have your number. Yeah. Make good coffee. Yeah. So one time you're there and you're seated, it gives you a call. I have a gig for you, come over here. Mm. And some of them, they have different people. They are connected. Remember, we have networks. Yeah. You, in particular, you have your own network. That's I, true. in particular, have my own network. So when you venture into coffee, the network changes also. The people that you associate with changes. Yeah. And they also bring positivity to you. The more you work into these environments, you see these people, the way they operate, time, it comes, it takes a cup of coffee, sips it, it's at work. Yeah your aspect also changes. You know down there, Kumutua once, you go to a restaurant, you sit, you start your kakawa, and you start the jazz, you forget even uh, <laughs> <laughs> about other things. Yeah, <laughs> but with the beautiful, like, the more you venture into coffee, yeah. neatness kicks in. Mm. Remember, you're dealing with beverages, yeah. serving people. Mm. Neatness, that is key. Time becomes mm. number one in your life. Yeah. Laziness is kicked out. Yeah. Because whenever you feel you, you're lazy, you sip a cup of coffee, mm. you're back <laughs> on track, you rethink. Yeah. The kind of people that you associate with changes. Yeah. You start reading too much. Because the more you go deep into coffee, the more you learn a lot. Yeah. Like you learn and discover so many things. And people want to associate their, like themselves with people who know. Mm. So you become someone different actually. Yeah. Not like... A, because in the coffee business, what you're taught is not the end of the end of it all. Mm -hmm. You have to keep on reading and discovering other things. Yeah. So the more things that you discover, the more drinks you bring on table. Mm -hmm. And the more drinks beverage and the more beverages that you bring on table, the more money into your pocket. Mm -hmm. Means that someone who started with nothing, your drink is taken by people, like people when they come. Mm -hmm. Ah, you bring me an Andrucina. Yeah. It's very nice. It was mixed in a very nice way, you know? Yeah. That is money into your what? Your pocket. So you keep on changing. Mm. You understand? You keep on changing, changing, and elevating. So those are things that people have to put in consideration. Join coffee, and you'll see that your life is going to change drastically. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not like, because if you're not inspired yourself, mm. the people that you work on, they will inspire, inspire you to work hard. <laughs> you know? Because yeah. trust me, there are baristas who are driving. Yeah. There are baristas who are moving out of the country. Yeah. Because. 
if you're working in let me say in Serena Hotel, a white comes, takes a sips a cup of coffee with a difference. Mm. Trust me, next time it will be called to go and train outside. Yeah, that's true. You know? Mm. So that is extra ex- extra money. That are common. Get the wire, connect it, fly it out. Mm. So it means that someone can learn it day one, day two. Mm. He knows it. But in coffee, you put in time. Yeah. But it's not, it, and, and, and it's not a profession that someone can just wake up and learn. No. Mm-hmm. You have to put in time. Yeah, yeah. You practice it. You understand? Yeah. So you need to get something whereby it's not done by many people. Mm. You have to get something whereby it's, if it, you know, on a hundred, it's not like 80, like it's like 30 people were doing it. Yeah. So you're coming up also. So, and in Uganda, it's coffee. Yeah. One food that I'm seeing that few people are doing it. Mm-hmm. So you go out for it. Means that by the time it's at its peak, you're, you're already, already there. there for uh-huh. yeah. So you the people they come to make <laughs> you saw it? So now you're making money. So yeah. add them to join coffee. Yeah. yeah, to go Facebook, they can try Blue Plus mm. uh, at all their social media platforms that yeah. is Twitter, Facebook, yeah. yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, Instagram. Um, I like the way you you know, as our coffee continues to brew, I like the way you put it in a very different perspective. When you talk to many people They'll tell you, ah, you should get into the coffee business because you want to get that money, you want to get a side gig. They never really put into perspective the kind of change that it brings to your life as a person. You know, you talked about, uh, first of all, you know, getting to meet different kinds of people, which means that your lifestyle will change. It will not be the same lifestyle that you came with before you entered the coffee business. You'll become a very neat person because now you have to serve people, which in turn will also build your interpersonal relationship. It will yeah. build your communication skills, you know, which you can not only use in coffee, but also use in your daily life, you know, and I think at the end of the day, money comes as a bonus. Yeah, it's a bonus. Earlier we were talking about, uh, you were telling me about how, you know, in the African culture, we are taught that, you know, after school, get into a job and get money, you know, without ever adding value to yourself, without ever, you know, getting all these things that you learn as an individual. So I like that perspective that you've brought out, you know, so if you're out there, if uh, you know you're waiting for school to open or you're just considering a career change, you want to do something new, consider learning about the coffee business and it's not only being a barista you know you can become a coffee roaster yeah by you the know, way you, yeah you can get involved in actually growing the coffee actually itself. it's a chain yeah yeah it's a chain oh. there, is, there is a farmer mm-hmm. there are those who do the processing point yeah there are those who roast the coffee yeah because in in coffee you have different things yeah and in these different things yeah okay all right i think a cup of coffee should be ready yeah yeah so, so it's a chain. Yeah. So you decide who you want to be. Because yeah. the final person is the consumer. Yeah. But before the consumer, there is a barrister yeah. who does the brewing bit of it all. Yeah. So you can decide where to fall. There are those who are good at roasting coffee yeah. and is not good at being a barrister. Mm. It is true. Mm. Mm? Just like here in studio, there are those who are good at production, yeah. but it's not good at sitting before the camera to speak. That is true. Yes. You, you see, yeah. Yeah? yeah? So it's a chain. Yeah. So once they start teaching you, your mind will push you there. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's a godly thing. Mm. It will push you there. Like you can do this. Yeah. And there are those who are just talented. You can <laughs> roast. <laughs> you can be a barista. You basically, fall yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 So you just come and decide where to fall. Yeah. yeah. So for for you who's out there, you can basically get involved in any part of the process. You don't only have to be the final consumer. Why not take an extra step and actually go backward? into the process and see what a barista does, what a roaster does, what people at the farms are doing growing coffee. It, it will be an exciting thing for you. And uh, we are in the part of the show where basically our coffee is ready. Yeah. And I think we can partake of it. But as we even partake of the coffee, um, I know that when you enter a coffee shop, okay, when you see the menu, there's like different kinds of coffee. You never know, okay, what's an espresso, what's an okay. Americano, what's a cappuccino, you know. So I just wanted to run us through maybe the top five uh, coffee beverages, you know, according to you as a barista that you as a barista would recommend to the people out there. Yeah, so now I would, uh, I would recommend an espresso. Okay, okay it's, it's something, um, okay, an, an espresso, it's made by an espresso machine. Oh. It's, a, it's a very big machine. Yeah. Now here you get your beans, you grind them, you make a powder out of those beans. Yeah. Then after you put under that coffee, that, that espresso machine. Mm. So it's always a strong shot. Yeah. It has a less caffeine, like less caffeine in it. Mm. Those, what they call high performance people, yeah. they take it so much because 
early in the morning they take that espresso uh-huh. just to boost up their mind like to be alert mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. active mm-hmm. then the other one is the cappuccino mm-hmm. and it's taken it's, it's why they take it here in Uganda mm-hmm. yeah it's cappuccino because it's, it's a balanced beverage yeah? Yeah. it's coffee which is an espresso yeah. then you have milk yeah. and it has high form like it has a large amount of foam yeah. on it eh? because the milk that we're using does we steam it yeah. we make a froth out of that milk so it's a cappuccino it's very nice mm. people love it so much for for some people who understand it they even use a spoon to eat the, yeah, the froth yeah. then there is what we call a, a cafe mocha cafe mocha we add chocolate in it mm. like two spoons of chocolate powder yeah. then uh, an espresso and plus milk and then a froth then there's what we call a latte latte it um, it has a lot of milk in it oh. yeah basically for it it's made with a lot of milk with less coffee, less coffee then less frog and uh, basically an americano too an american is uh, a dilute of um, it, it's like diluting an espresso oh. because for it we get we get a third of hot water then after we add on an espresso oh. so basically those are the four, those are the top four yeah. For you. Yeah. yeah the other ones they are not so much common here yeah. so even if you tell it to someone like and i forgot to someone oh. not understanding <laughs> not understand that is yeah. not true but those ones yeah. are basically people when they walk into a cafe yeah. they're like i need a cappuccino like that yeah. well next time you walk into a cafe don't be so scared to you don't uh you know to get what is there on the menu at least now i've told you the top four that you can actually get. Uh, well, Andrew, thank you very much. We're getting to what's the end of the show. Uh-huh. I want to thank you for basically coming on the show and you know running us through your pleasure. experience and you know just encouraging the people out there. You know, encouraging them to get into the coffee business and you know the different benefits that they can uh, get from it. But before we go, okay, I think it's time for us to partake of our cup of coffee. I always like testing every barista that comes in. Mm-hmm. Always has a different spin on the way they make their coffee. Okay. Know? So I believe that this one also has. <laughs> and Andrew Chino somewhere, uh-huh. <laughs> which we're going to test. And Andrew Matic. But yeah. now basically our coffee is done here. Yeah. So it's already prepared. So as you're pouring your cup of coffee, have this. Can tell you, you know the one, well, the one consistency I've seen with uh, most of the baristas that have come here mm-hmm. is that you just don't pour coffee like you're pouring tea. It has to be a swirly motion. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we are used to this, um, it's called a pitcher. Yeah. But the more you do it like that also, oh. yeah, it gives some bit of a texture on the yeah. coffee. Okay. okay, we treasure coffee. Yeah. Now. You know, not like then you just cha. But you just pour everything uh-huh. and no, there's no <laughs> you know, the, the more uniqueness you add into it, uh, the more grimness that you add to your cup of coffee. Yeah. And it also looks very professional, you know, yeah, by something way. like that. Well, Andrew, as we take a cup of coffee, uh, let us toss to the coffee break. Mm-hmm. For you who's out there, thank you for watching the coffee break. It has been me, Emmanuel, in the studio with Andrew, who has run us through his story. And he has been telling us why you should actually get uh, involved in the coffee business. If for any more information on Andrew or for where you can go, for Brew Plus, where you can go to study about coffee, let us know. You can always send us a message. We will get that information down to you. Till next time, this has been the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television with me, Emmanuel. Have a blessed day, a blessed night, or a blessed afternoon, wherever you are in the world.
the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They've moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. And I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Uh, 